things. There's thousands of moments in my life that I cherished and I will cherish till the day I die that would not have been possible if I did not speak Spanish. You're gonna have these random coffee shop conversations with strangers, long talks with, with friends and, and cultivate deep, meaningful, lifelong friendships that you would never have had access to. There's techniques, methods and practices that go back thousands of years. Somehow none of it's taught in school. They're extremely powerful, life-changing. Four of hearts, uh -huh. yeah. and then yeah. five of spades, yeah. and then the nine of hearts, yes. and then the nine of clubs, Correct. and the king of hearts. Yeah. Eso! <laughs> No, they don't let me in there anymore. I don't know why, right? You're gonna have to wrestle with your subconscious brain, with the monkey brain. You're gonna want to not show up. You're gonna want to skip a day, skip two days. Next thing you know, five months go by. And you're like, what the hell happened to my Spanish, right? We need to stay consistent. We need to support each other and, and help each other stay motivated, stay focused. And so we can all grow and succeed and move forward together. If you come to 10 out of 11 consecutive lessons, you get the full online course for free, which is normally 350 US. You get the whole course for free. And if you show up to 20 out of 21, you get to come to a live course for free, which is 400 US cash. You get to come for free. It's simple, but it's not always gonna be easy. We're gonna have something very, very special tonight. Bless you. I have eight special gifts for you tonight. Three of these gifts are things that have literally changed my life. And I can guarantee you 100% if you implement these gifts into your lives with a moderate amount of consistency over the next 12 months, I guarantee you it will change your life as well. There's another three gifts that you're gonna have today. More tangible things for you. I have a gift for you for the future. And there's gonna be a surprise gift for you at the end of the, at the, end of the lesson. Hey, Christmas! <laughs> Before we talk about the first gift, which is why we're all here, really, I want to ask you a question. If we could take a pause on our lives and just travel around, road trip across the, any country you want, all of your problems, responsibilities, everything gets put on pause, you just disappear, you have all the experiences you want for a whole year, then you come back and everything continues where it left off, all your money is back, everything, you didn't miss any work, who would want to do that? Right? Travel around and you, you can't get hurt. Everything goes back to normal. You can never get hurt. You can't die. You can't lose any money. You can't miss anything. Just go out, great, have fun, explore and travel back. That'd be fun, right? Amazing. There, there might be a couple of things that would maybe uh, give you a better experience on your trip. Right? Maybe if you had a car, for example, then instead of hitchhiking, that might make things a little bit easier. Nothing wrong with hitchhiking, right? You'll have your fun experience, but a vehicle would make things a lot easier, right? Yep. And also what goes good with a vehicle? Some gasoline, right? So if you had a little gasoline card with free gas, you can fill it up all the time. That would help a lot on your trip, right? Yep. What about if there was a road and you didn't have to go off road four by four into the jungle? That's also fun, but the road allows you to get there a lot, safe, a lot more safely, right. right? No problems, no stress, just flow. What about GPS? Again, nothing wrong with going without a GPS. That's fun too. Get lost, buy a map, end up in random towns, ask for directions, that's, that's fine. But GPS helps. If you want to be a little more efficient and see as many things as, as possible. And what about a guide? I think having a guide with you would be the ultimate ease. You can relax. The guy's taking care of everything. He knows exactly where to go, where to turn. The, the best activities to do, the most efficient way. So there's plenty of ways that we could enjoy our trip. But the more things that we have, the more efficient, the more fun, the less stress, the more comfortable it's all going to become. Who wants to learn Spanish? Excellent. We're in the right room. We're in the right place. So the first gift I want to give you is the gift of Spanish. Everybody receive the gift of Spanish, put it into your hearts. We're going to receive the gift of Spanish. Spanish is the, is the objective, it's what we're going towards. It's the holy grail. But to get there, it's going to be a lot faster if we have a vehicle. The vehicle is going to be speed learning, memory hacking, brain hacking, whatever you want to call it. Right? This is a vehicle, something tangible that you can rely on. It's efficient, it will always be there. 
right? Whenever you're having any doubts, you have this vehicle, it's solid and it will get you everywhere you want to go. Speed learning and brain hacking is a solid vehicle. Now, if you don't have any gas, it's not going to do you much good. The gas is your motivation, your inspiration, your why. That's something that you can't just fill it up once and drive for the year. You have to constantly keep an eye on your gauge. The gas is always going down, you have to refill it. So you always have to focus and refill that motivation, that why, the inspiration. So think about why you're learning Spanish, why you're doing that. You might as well just stay home and watch TV, right? There's a reason why you're, out, why you're here. Now, the gas pedal is also very important. You have the nice car, full tank gas. If you don't press the accelerator, you're not going anywhere. So you have to take some action. You have to do something. And it's not just press the gas pedal once and I mean, yeah, if you have a good car, you can put it on cruise control. That helps, but normally you got to keep your foot on the gas, right? You have to continuously always put action and practice. It won't just happen by itself, right? If, if, maybe if you have a Tesla, it'll drive by itself, but normally you have to drive it by yourself, all right? And time is an essential element. It needs to take the time that it's going to take, right? Yeah, you could do a quick little weekend trip and have a lot of fun. But if you want to do the full experience, you want to see all the cities, all the flavors, all the music, all the people and really experience it all, I think a full year is, is a good amount of time to have that, the whole complete experience. Okay? Now, speaking about the motivation, the gas, I think that's one of the most important things because that's how most people end up giving up and stopping the trip, cutting it short, right? Or stressing out because you're always running on, on fumes and you're not stopping to refill. We got Brendan here. Brendan started learning, it was a year ago, January, right? 12 months about? So 12 months ago, Brendan started learning Spanish. Now Brendan, just like what I was learning, just like when all of you, just like every human being out there, we have certain elements that might get into our way, stand in our way. The Spanish language is incredibly simple. It's extremely simple. If you were a robot, an artificial intelligence robot, I could sit down and talk to you in four hours and get you to a really solid level of basic Spanish. In 10 hours, you'd be out there talking politics and economy and, and arts and everything. There's not that much information that you really need. So why does it take so damn long if a robot could do it in, in 10 hours? We have a supercomputer here, but we also have a lot of other elements that we don't really understand. Nobody ever told us or showed us how different parts of our brain works, how the neurology, the neuroscience behind it works. So if we don't understand it, we're just going blind. So we have a lot of things that could be our friends or our enemies, right? The monkey brain, the monkey mind, yada, yada, yada. You're not gonna make it. You're not smart enough. You're forgetting too much. You're not making any progress. You sound like an idiot. Everybody's laughing at you, blah, 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 right? The ego. Standing in our way, right? Sometimes not even, not even starting, not even stopping because I'm not a person who makes mistakes, all right? I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta wait until I'm perfect before I go out there and show myself. God forbid somebody will see me make a mistake, right? God forbid somebody would know that I'm a fallible human being that makes mistakes and is not perfect, right? If you look at people's Instagrams and Facebooks, everybody's perfect nowadays, right? Nobody's ever gonna show a blemish or anything stupid, right? We have so many things going against us that we don't really know how to control. So just like with Brendan, just like with me, just like with all of you, every single day there are these things holding us back, making us doubt ourselves, making us struggle more than we need to. But Brendan kept going, kept going, was practicing five day, four or five days a week. He was, he's a very hardworking, disciplined person, so he stayed with it, but he was always working in, on his other projects. But he just practiced like an hour a day, four or five days a week. And now he's speaking to people, people think he's Latino. So Brendan, it is Latino. Exactly. <laughs> so he was finally traveling in, in, in Colombia and now back, finally taking some a little bit of time away from work to experience la vida. Mi socio, mi sucio, mi, mi socio, <laughs> increíble. Puede hablar perfectamente, eh, pues, mexicano. Pero yo aprendí con, con él y ahorita puedo, puedo hablar, no perfectamente, pero con muchas palabras. Y cada día, paso a paso, estoy mejorando. I've been with him and with other people having hour-long conversations, deep subjects, 
emotions, all the body parts, about every different things, and he's got it after, after less than a year, or actually now about a year. So, round of applause, yes. But, I want to, I'm more curious to hear about, not the wins, because we can see the wins, all the difficulties, the struggles, the doubts along the way, just in a, a minute or two. Yeah, yeah. Muchas gracias, Brendan. So, what is very interesting, Phil definitely teaches exactly, uses different uh, programming techniques and brain hacking, he calls it, you know, what he calls it. But if you actually <laughs> really put it into play, he'll come up in your, in your head again and again and again long term. He still comes up in my head. <laughs> But um, I would say the, the most difficult piece to it, which I believe you can all overcome, is just being consistent and saying, hey, I messed up, but it's totally cool. And then every time you say, oh, I messed up, it's a little bit further away. And then soon enough, you're thinking less and less of being able to speak. And so some of the difficulties that I experienced was I have all these other things going on. I'm building software, I'm building like true AI and artificial intelligence and doing all these really cool things. I don't have a lot of time to, to practice. However, what I would do is I would take what he told me and I would just talk to myself in my head again and again and again. And then I would also just speak um, out loud when I could. I'd be like, podría, 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 podré, podré, podría. And I would, I would just like say these things and then I would forget. Sometimes I wouldn't even know what I'm saying, but I would say and I would feel like I'm getting something, right? And so what I would say is the difficulties are going to come. They're so normal. It's so a part of the process. However, when you say, I am going to do this, I am going to do that, and you have some type of end goal in mind. Like for me, I want to speak in front of a thousand people only in Spanish and impact South America. Then you know that you're bettering your and you're going to get closer to that every single day. Even though you feel like you're getting further away, what I would do is I would be here, I would go back to the States, and then I would come back and I'd be like, wait a second, I know more. And it wasn't until I quieted my mind that I recognized oh, thank you. And so, yes, every single day, it was a struggle. It's still kind of a struggle. Like, I can spend a whole weekend with, with someone that I'm dating and not speak a single bit of English and be fine, but I still am struggling. I'm trying, trying to say things and sentences. So it's not like it just magically you learn one day. No, it's a process. But if you take it step by step, and even when you're messing up, you know that your mess up is actually a little bit less of a mess up than before, and that it is starting to get ingrained in your mind, soon enough it'll turn into not only one word that you learn, but two words that now couple with each other and now make a phrase. And those dichos and, and the, the jokes and the things, if you take that very seriously, <coughs> implement the way that he does teach it, a lot of the difficulties, they're just not gonna seem like difficulties so much anymore. It's just gonna start thinking like, oh, this is just a process. It's a part of the process. So that's basically um, what I would say to anyone. And also, uh, the process does suck. I feel like a lot of people try and make it seem like, oh yeah, it's just, it's super simple. It is super simple once you start, um, but it also is very difficult at times. And that's totally fine. I believe that you guys, will, you ladies and, and men and gentlemen, will be able to get this if you take in his practices. So, uh, yeah, that's what I, that's what I have to do. Away, away. Gracias, hermano. Sorry, man. My boy. Excelente. So it was, even after a couple of months, he was already starting to have pretty solid, lengthy conversations, still with a lot of holes. But I mean, we, within 12 months to be, after a 10 minute conversation, people think that he's Latino, right? That's a very, very great progress. Now, es posible para todos. It's possible for everybody. Basic conversational fluency is very easy. That's where you can go to any like bar or party and just kind of connect with people, get, you know, the basic, your basic needs met, right? Expra explain things, have a simple connection, but not, nothing of depth, nothing of meaning, not having long, com just having fun and a basic connection. In, in a very short period of time, you could have that. But to have 
long conversations, deep connections, right? Where you're a whole weekend with somebody that could take a couple of months, even five months, six months, even a year, right? Until it's just all flowing very nicely. But for most people that those results, like what Brendan has for most people that takes 15, 20, 30 years. I see it all the time on my, on my, on my social media posts of 15 hours basic and people are like, oh, I've been in this country for 30 years and I could barely handle this. It's impossible. It's bullshit. Yeah, if that's your mindset, it will be impossible. If you, your monkey brain will always be talking to you, will always be trying to bring you down. So your biggest battle is not going to be with the Spanish language. I guarantee it. Your biggest battle is going to be right here. And the brain has a really funny way of being very selective with its memories, right? So if you take three steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, two step forward, five, five, going back and forward, your brain will just show you every step back and repeat. And it'll show you 10 steps back and you say, see, look, step back, step back. It won't show you all the forward steps that you took. So it's your job to remember those moments, get a journal. It's very important to keep track of all your wins. Every time you got something that you wanted, every time you express something, you, got, you have to keep that gas tank filled as much as possible before your monkey brain wears you down. So the goal of this weekly meetup is to get you where Brendan is within 12 months. We're going to have a free meetup every week here or somewhere else. We're going to figure it out as we go along. But every week, two hours, and I'm going to share all the tricks, the secrets, the tips, the shortcuts. I reformatted the entire language into very simple, easy to grasp uh, elements that you're able to, you're going to be able to take with you on your daily practices. If you just come here once a week and do nothing outside, I can't guarantee you'll get there in 12 months. But if you spend five, 10 minutes a day minimum, ideally a little bit more, but five, 10 minutes a day, just putting into practice what we learn here, I can guarantee you, you will not be able to recognize the level of fluency and it's going to transcend the language and it's going to start rippling up into your work, into your businesses, your relationships. Yes. Uh, what are you saying is very, very true about this transcend who I was a year and a half ago. I am Puerto Rican and my, uh, my grandmother from that side, who I thought I was, like with all the things I did, I played college football, I did like so many different businesses, my influence, like different things to who I am now. It's like, I look at that stuff in the past as like a completely different person. And it's, it's actually really cool. It's really, really cool. And I just wanted to say that it's a beautiful thing once you start learning the language and how, how passionate and, and uh, unique it is. It's, you just, I don't know, it's almost as if like you're, you're, your life just shifts and it adjusts in a way that you don't really know it's going to, but uh, I wanna date Latinas. I don't wanna date uh, people from the States anymore. And uh, no, no offense. <laughs> 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 Transcending, it's, it, it's very serious, it's very real. I've seen it, I've had over a thousand students so far and I hear it all the time, the, your, your level of creativity, once you start connecting and accessing these different parts of your brain, right, your, level, your creative thinking, your lateral thinking, your problem solving skills, your interpersonal skills, your connection skills, your ability to handle situation, your ability to handle the monkey brain. It's not just your, potentially your worst enemy, thank you brother. Uh, for Spanish, right? It's there with you everywhere and every day and every job interview and in every situation, it's there. It could be your best friend, but if you don't know how to handle it, it could be your worst enemy, right? So the more effort you put into your understanding your brain and your mind with the Spanish, it's going to ripple throughout so many different aspects. So that's the first gift is the gift of Spanish. That if you just come here every week and practice a little bit, you're going to get further than you ever thought possible. The, the other two gifts are things that are going to actually make the first gift possible. The, the second gift is speed learning and the memory hacking. Now, the Spanish has only been in my life since 2015. Uh, just to give you an idea of why the hell is Canadian dude is teaching, teaching y'all Spanish. Uh, I've been doing brain hacking, speed learning tricks for the last 20 years. It, it got me through school when I was barely passing. Uh, I didn't want to study more. 
and I wanted to leave. I was managing a couple of restaurants, working municipal law enforcement back home in Montreal, and I wanted to come to Mexico. So I managed to find uh, a job that I liked, general manager in the Thompson Hotel rooftop restaurant catch. Uh, I joined the uh, interview process. I managed to make it down to the final two. And they said, Phil, we want to hire you. We like you, but we're going to go with the other guy. Immediately, my ego was trying to scream out, well, screw you. I don't, want, I don't need this job anyway. I'm happy where I am. I'm fine where I am. Screw you guys. I, I, I'm fine. Let the ego have his tantrum. And then instead, I decided to ask a simple question. Can I ask why? And they said, Phil, I don't know how it didn't occur to you earlier, but apparently to manage a restaurant in Mexico with Mexican staff and Mexican you know, clientele, you kind of need to learn and speak, you need to speak Spanish. And quite frankly, they have no idea how I made it through this far without Spanish. <laughs> so I said, okay, that's fair enough. But maybe we have a misunderstanding. I don't speak Spanish now, but give me four weeks and I'll speak Spanish. And I said, how the hell are you going to learn Spanish in less than a month? I said, that's my problem. I'm going to worry about that. I don't know, how I'm gonna, I don't know if it's going to be possible, but I, I'm pretty confident in my speed learning tricks. I'll do the best I can. If I can't figure it out, worst case scenario, in four weeks, I'm going to fix all your logistical problems and you have those four weeks to find somebody better than him, better than I, you'll find the perfect replacement. They said, okay. So they hired me on board. I had four weeks. I had 15 pages of menu description in Spanish and in English to memorize. I had to learn Spanish and I had like 150 employees in the hotel to learn their names and working six days a week. 10, 15 hour days, and trying to live my life. That's the immersion, that's why like... Yes, every situation becomes a classroom. Every person becomes your teacher. I didn't have time to go to class. So I had to make the best out of all these different situations. So that brings me back to the second. That wouldn't be possible, right? The Spanish element has changed my life. When I look back at all the people that I've met, all the, the parties, the, 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 the celebrations, the road trips, the conversations, the connections, all the different things. There's thousands of moments in my life that I cherished and I will cherish till the day I die that would not have been possible if I did not speak Spanish. If I look back at my life pre-Spanish, it's a whole different version of Phil. And if I look at all the things that I've experienced since then, if I didn't have Spanish, I would be extremely depressed. I would have lost half of my life experience and I'm still a young guy. <laughs> so I'm extremely excited for you guys because you guys are where I was in 2015 and you guys are going to embark on this mission, this journey, this road trip and you're going to have all of these connections, you're going to have the dates with the Latinas and Latinos, you're going to have the, the road trips, you're going to have the, the, the parties, the weddings, the mariachis, you're gonna have these random coffee shop conversations with strangers. You're gonna have long talks with, with friends and, and cultivate deep, meaningful, lifelong friendships that you would never have had access to. It's all gonna happen with time, right? So this goes back to the second gift that I wanna share with you guys with the speed learning. None of it would've been possible if I didn't have that. Now, 20 years ago, I had to make a decision to either change lines of work of, for my, my dream job of being a cop or study more because I was failing too many things. So I took to the internet and I started looking, how do I learn faster? How can I l memorize more efficiently? And I went down a rabbit hole. There's so many books out there. There's studies, there's, there's techniques, methods, and practices that go back thousands of years. Somehow none of it's taught in school. They're extremely powerful, life-changing. I started applying them just to test them out and I noticed immediate difference. So I started, whenever I find something cool, I have to share it. There's no point in enjoying it by yourself. So I started sharing with all my friends, guys, come to my place. I'm going to show you how to cheat on the exam. They're everybody's excited. Let's go. All right. So we're going to take our notes. All right. And we're going to commit them to memory in a way that we can close our eyes and have all the answers right there when we need them. They said, Phil, that's studying. I said, no, 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 no. It's not studying. Look, we're going we're gonna to trick the information into the brain, we're going to force it in, and then we're going to have the, the information for the exam. Still sounds like studying. 
So I'm like, just trust me, let's try it this way. So we thought we were cheating, the teachers thought we were cheating, all of our grades are going up. It is insane how much of an impact a few little simple tricks. Now you could spend 20 years studying brain hacking and speed learning, all these different things, but in reality, if you just understand a couple of simple principles, that gives you like 70% or 80% of what you're gonna get out of it. So you don't need that much to be able to apply that in your day-to-day -day life and to be able to maximize your, your learning experience and literally learn 10, 20, 100 times faster, right? So a little example that I like to do to demonstrate is who can memorize a whole deck of cards? You. You, yeah. <laughs> so the speed learning could be applied to anything, every single day. Every time you meet somebody and you forget, you forget their name instantly. Every time you have to learn something for work. Every time you call the bank and you have to get your, your credit cards. When we understand how the brain works, we can reprogram, reformat anything. So I'm a little st uh, nervous in front of crowds, even though it doesn't, look, doesn't, doesn't show. Um, I memorized this just to give you an example of what the brain can do. So we'll try it in a quick moment here and see if it works. All right, let's give it a try. <laughs> we'll start with the three of diamond. Here, we'll get you to three of diamond. Three, three of diamond? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, three of diamond. <laughs> the six, six of clubs? Yes. Excelente. The ace yes. of yes. diamonds? Yes. The two of hearts? Yes. The six of hearts? Yes. Excelente. The four of diamonds? Yes. The ten of clubs? Yes. The king of diamonds? Yes. <laughs> the four of spades? Yes. The ace of clubs? Yes. Yep. Excelente. Six of spades? Yes. Yep. Excelente. The six of spades. Oh, now the, the monkey brain's coming in. Monkey brain's coming in. <laughs> six of spades. Uh, then we have the eight of hearts. Yes. Hey, we're back in action. Eight of hearts with the two of clubs Absolutely. and the two of diamonds. Yes. And the ace. Oh, I think it just mixed up two cards. Uh, one of these is the ace of uh, hearts. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the queen of diamonds. Yes. And then the queen of clubs. Yes. Brings in the ace of spades. Yes. Then the king of spades. Yes. And then the joker. Yep. yep. All right. Then we got the three of hearts. Yes. Yes. The seven of hearts. Yes. yes. The five of clubs. Yep. Yeah. The nine of spades. Yeah. The Three of clubs, the queen of hearts, the nine of diamonds, the seven of clubs, king of clubs, the eight of clubs, the jack of clubs, the jack of clubs brings the seven of spades, the ten of spades, the ten of diamonds, then the ten of diamonds brings the Queen of the Queen of Spades yes. mm -hmm. with the four of clubs yeah, yeah. and the four of clubs with damn phone four of clubs with the seven of diamonds yes. and then the other Joker yes. then the five of diamond five of hearts Correct. five of diamonds yes. three of spades yes. three of spades the ten of hearts yes. ten of hearts Eight of spades, yeah. eight of spades with the jack of hearts, yeah. becomes a jack of diamonds, yeah. becomes a two of spades, yeah. becomes the jack of spades, yeah. becomes the six of diamonds, yeah. eight of diamonds, yeah. and then the eight of diamonds brings the uh, five of hearts, five of hearts, five of spades, no, four of hearts, wow and then five of spades, yes. and then the nine of hearts, yes. and then the nine of clubs, yeah. and the king of hearts. Yeah. Eso! Yeah. <laughs> Take you to Las Vegas. No, they don't let me in there anymore. I don't know why. <laughs>
All right, so my brother had like seven or eight concussions in high school. He never remembers how many. Uh, he had a really hard time studying for exams. You go to a party, he'd forget everybody's names instantaneously. He, in 15 hours, was able to learn very solid Spanish and he was able to memorize the whole deck of cards. And he even did it. I, I used to do these lechuga groups and I was sick one day and he replaced me in front of a whole group and he did the whole deck. I promise you, it's just a simple matter of implementing some simple tricks over a consistent period of time. My students are always freaked out when I, I have a course with 10 students and I have everybody's phone numbers memorized and the date of births and everything. And it's, it's, not to, it's not to impress you, it's to express to you, to show to you what the brain is capable of, right? When I first started memorizing Descartes, it took me an hour to memorize the deck. Now I do it in 10 minutes. My first phone number was three years ago that I memorized like with these tricks. It took me, what, five, 10 minutes for one phone number? Now in that time I do 10, 15, 10 12 phone numbers, right? So it's not a question of how smart you think you are, where you are genetically, right? Of course, there is a little percentage of predisposition where you might be a little bit easier for you at the beginning, but any single human being could get to the point where you're doing the exact same thing. I guarantee it. It's been proven. It's been shown. There's a lot of studies. There's memory competitions around the world where people are literally just memorizing like four or five thousand numbers in one hour. Can you imagine sitting down with a series of numbers, right? It's been shown that geniuses, people with high IQs can't hold on to more than seven numbers at a time, right? You show a random genius, seven, seven, eight numbers, you'll have a hard time remembering them all. Whereas these average people who have practiced these tricks in one hour are memorizing four or five thousand digits, right? In a couple of hours, they're memorizing 20 to 40 decks of cards, one after the other, tac, 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 tac. The record, I think, for one deck is a couple of seconds. It's like 10 seconds. He literally is just going like this through the whole pack and then he's done. He didn't start like that. It took him time in the beginning. It probably took him an hour, right? But whatever you do consistently will grow, all right? So we're gonna learn some Spanish now. Um, but just before that, let's finish with the, quick th with the gifts. The third gift is the gift of giving. We all have it in our DNA. It's all in our wiring. We're, Societal creatures were designed to help each other, support each other, uplift each other, help each other, motivate each other, and work together. That's how our brain and our everything works best. So those who have ever experienced helping somebody else or asking for help and, and doing this exchange, it feels great. But later on, when you start looking at the neuroscience and the spirituality and all the other things, you realize that from an egotistical point of view, from a selfish point of view, helping people helps yourself a lot. Right? From the spiritual cell side, you can think of karma, what you put out, you will receive. But also from, from the neurological uh, perspective, right? when you are helping others, you are actually receiving a trifecta of happiness chemicals, extreme happiness high that takes over your brain. So we have four happiness chemicals and one stress chemical. Most of the time when you're fucking up in Spanish, when you're making mistakes, when you can't speak, it's because you have a stress chemical going through your body. What is a stress chemical? Cortisol. Cortisol wreaks havoc in your body and in your mind. It lowers your IQ by 50-60% easy. It removes all the information, right? You see, even I forget some cards when I have cortisol in my system, right? Nobody is, is immune to it. But there are things that we could do to limit the cortisol we have in our body and limit how long it stays there, right? Breathing is an easy way to reset your central nervous system, but you can flush it out with happiness. So if you're in a situation where you're helping people, you're at a dog rescue place walking dogs, then you're helping somebody, right? You're getting these, these chemicals in your brain and it's pushing out the cortisol, which allows you to access more of your Spanish and it allows you to learn much more at a much faster rate. So the more you give, the more you will receive, not just in your Spanish, but in all areas of your life. So to continue on that uh, note of giving, uh, the, the three gifts, from today. I always try to uh, support uh, as much as I can local projects, communities, uh, entrepreneurs, small businesses, things like that. Uh, so we have three here today and I bought a whole bunch of stuff for you guys to take home. So the first one is the Flau Pau. So this is from uh, Ina. She makes this special blends of uh, flowers uh, that you can smoke uh, either by itself or with tobacco or with weeds. 
Uh, you can e eat it with honey, let it, let it chill for a month and then take a little bit of spoon every day or you can make tea out of it. A lot of it is different tea things. Uh, so she puts in all of her love, her energy and a little bit of witchcraft to set some intentions on her four different uh, blends of flavors. So whatever you want to attract more of in your life, mindfulness, uh, love, uh, ab abundance or gratitude. You have the mintfulness, the arousal, the akuna matata and the abundance. So Ina, can you just share for 30 seconds why you do what you do? Yay! So I bought like 30 jars so you can all take some home. If you don't want it, you can give it to somebody else. They're really, really cool little gifts. Uh, so before you leave, everybody just grab one. So thank you, Ina. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Ina. Uh, I started this because I really love um, herbs and spices. And for me, like all the plants, they have like two different effects on you. One is the physical effect, one is the, the other is the um, spiritual effect. Rest or not feeling well or something like this. Yeah, Phil had some this idea that I could actually sell these things and help with that a lot of pe uh, more people than just my friends so that I can give my attention and love and uh, my knowledge to all of you. Yeah. Yay! Who here has tried the flau pao? Is it good? Yep. See, si. even tastes better and, and I don't smoke very often, but the cops can't smell it. It, it, it covers the, the smell. Yeah. The, the, for those of you who are worried about the time, no, we're going to pack so much Spanish in a ridiculously fast amount of time that you're going to get like 20 hours of normal lessons in like half an hour. Don't worry, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, second, we got Brian who uh, on my last Spanish course, my last three day fast track to fluency course, Brian bought a bu uh, brought a bunch of micro doses and we used the micro doses and it was, uh, I would say it was like a 15-20% uh, increase of the overall experience of people, how quick they were learning. Uh, so Brian, uh, we got, I bought a bunch of uh, micro dose psilocybin pills so you can take one home with you to experiment it. Can you explain in like 30 seconds a minute what are the benefits of uh, micro dosing? Sure. Brian! <laughs> Hello everybody, um, I'm Brian, I'm a psychedelic facilitator, mushroom cultivator, so um, I work with uh, psilocybin mushrooms frequently. Um, if anybody's heard of some of the latest news about how it's impacting a lot of healing communities, it's become popular, but um, a lot of the, the clinical studies have been around um, that as well as how it affects the brain as far as uh, increasing the neuroplasticity within the brain, or also known as like neurogenesis. Um, so it allows you, like they say like, oh, you're gonna lose brain cells and you can't recreate brain cells. Well, that's not true. You can rebuild your brain. Um, so the psilocybin mushrooms helps build uh, these neural connections within your brain, which is super helpful with NLP techniques where we're taking Spanish and tying them to stories and, and building different types of connections to how we're speaking the language. Uh, the psilocybin mushrooms really help and assist in that process. Excelente. Gracias, hermano. And then the third thing, he's an amazing, amazing, talented chef. I've had a lot of friends from Toronto and Montreal come down, big foodies, big difficult people, and they absolutely love this cooking. You know, your, your first restaurant is not very easy. It's very different cooking and putting all your heart and soul into food than to have marketing and strategies and planning and, and you know, have all these different things to think about. I'm trying to support him. So I have a, a, a bunch of 200 peso and 100 peso gift certificates that I bought for you guys. So there's a whole pile there. You're gonna have a great time. And it's a great person to practice your Spanish with. Isaias, come up here, buddy. A very, very talented chef, a beautiful human being, an amazing person. And also, also Ina come back up. ECS's phone was not working properly, so he couldn't get uh, on uh, Rappi anymore. And today, Ina and Les bought him a brand new, really nice Motorola phone. So he's back on Rappi. Thank you, Ina. Everybody send some love to Les, he had to, he had to go, but thank you Les. Yeah. So in, in 30 seconds a minute, why do you do what you do? Why do you cook? Why do you, why do you, go, why do you work six days a week, 15 hour days? You know, uh, thank you so much for coming for the Spanish class with uh, my friend and my brother Phil. You know, he's a really nice guy. I don't speak English very well, I'm so sorry, you know. Who thinks his, Spa <laughs> Who thinks his English is great? <laughs> well, you know, when, when I child, you know, all the time say, you know, I have a dream. I have a dream. My dream is, I want to put my pressure, you know, 
And it's not too easy, not too easy to put this rest. And nothing is easy, but nothing is impossible too, you know. When I moved to uh, to USA, I don't speak English, nothing, you know, only Espanol, Espanol. But I say, I can do it, you know I can do it. So the kitchen is my passion, you know. It's my passion. Now, my dream is now is real. Not only for me, only for you. You help all you guys, you know. For him, for Ina, for everybody, you know. Um, they help me a lot. Um, you know, Lola's restaurant is not only for me. It's for todos ustedes. Para todos ustedes, you know, for everybody. Um, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes I want to cry, you know, because I have only uh, uh, one year here in Playa and I see good people. Um, they put everything for myself and they don't know who I am, you know, and, and really I appreciate that, you know, and I work too hard for, you know, and this is my passion and I love Lola's restaurant, but thank you so much, maybe someday you can go to who likes his food? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for your help. Thank you so much for help, uh, my hermano Pio. Um, you can speak Spanish too. Yeah! <laughs> Muchas gracias. Free, Muchas gracias. Free Spanish lessons any day in Lola's also. <laughs> gracias, amigos. Muchas gracias. Sí. Adios. Working on your dream, right? He's got plenty of doubts, plenty of reasons to stop. But he keeps going every day, moving forward, and people are finally starting to realize it and enjoy it. So, all right, so those are the three gifts from now. Also, I'm gonna be bribing you guys to keep coming consistently here. Every second week that you come to consecutive, there's gonna be a whole table full of different things that I'm gonna buy from other artisans or, or local businesses or whatever. If you come to five consecutive classes, I'm gonna give you the online course for free, which is seven verb tenses in an hour with a couple of hours of extra bonus content and practice for free. If you come to 10 out of 11 consecutive lessons, you get the full online course for free, which is normally 350 US. You get the whole course for free. And if you show up to 20 out of 21, you get to come to a live course for free, which is 400 US cash. You get to come for free. If you already did the course, either one, you can gift it to somebody else. They're transferable, the online courses or the live ones. So I'm trying to get you to consistently come and just show up. Showing up is three quarters of the battle. And I guarantee you, if you do this consistently for 12 months, you will be in a place that you would, would never have thought possible. All right. Um, and then the last surprise, we'll give it at the end. All right. So let's get into a bit of Spanish while we're waiting for him to uh, come up. I was going to memorize these. Uh, but I had an hour and a half with the chiropractor because I had a fractured vertebrae here. So uh, I was going to do it while he was working on me, but the pain was <laughs> a little bit more than I anticipated. So I'm going to cheat sheet here for you guys. So the reason why Spanish is incredibly simple is because of all the similarities and the overlaps between Spanish and English, right? What happened in 1066? Right? What a great job the education did, system did teaching us, right? Nobody knows what 1066, I didn't know until recently. <laughs> the Battle of Hastings, right? In the Battle of Hastings, William the Conqueror led the Norman invasion of England and won. For 300 years, England was French. Who knew that? How crazy is that? For 300 years, England was French. And in that time, all the legal system, right, royalty, everything was happening in, in French. So during that time, they absorbed literally five, six, seven thousand words, depending on what your vocabulary is, how you count them. But at least five thousand words were taken from French <coughs> and put into English. Now it's like when you were in school and copying off of your friend, right, they couldn't copy the exact same thing. So they changed one or two things to make it look different and then they called it English. That's why uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, William Dumas, this famous French uh, poet, author, he famously read a book in English and said, eh, English is French, but badly pronounced. <laughs> right? a, little, a, little, a little French arrogance there. But he's got a point, because if you just learn the subtle, fine art of bullshittery, pardon my French, 
finessing, you can take your English, all the vocabulary, the extensive vocabulary that you spent a lifetime acquiring, just make it sound sexy, throw a little Spanish accent, throw a vowel in at the end, and ole, you have it in Espanol, right? You'd be surprised how, like, I've, I've had people just as a joke, Say, look, speak to them in Spanish, but with a, in English, but with, a, with, a, with the best Spanish accent you can. And people will understand most of what they're saying. It's cr freaky, right? But somehow the monkey brain is always trying to make us believe that the, that the English language and the Spanish language are completely different, right? You're going to see a word like independientemente and independently, and you say, no, 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 these are two different words. But when you really focus and you know what to look for, independientemente, independently, they're almost exactly the same. Even similar words, like very, like the same, like bus and bus are spelled the same. Bus and bus. And you would be surprised by how many people don't know what the word bus means. They're like, bus, no, I, I don't speak Spanish, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> she speaks too fast, I can't understand. <laughs> right? If you just took one second, slowed down, took a breath, relaxed your ears, you would understand so much more. And if you're able to embrace this subtle art of bullshittery and just speak English with a Spanish accent, add some vowels, try to apply some simple transformational patterns, right? We're gonna see 20 of them here that are in, in a couple of minutes that's gonna give you access to five, 6,000 words, okay? So in, in Espanol, there's 12,681 words that end with I-O-N and there's 1,200 of them that are the exact same in Spanish and in English. <laughs> exact same. Passion, pasión. It's just sexier. That's it. No difference. Investigation, investigación. Right? Extradition, ex, extradición. Transportation, yes. Right? Vascularization. Something with the, with the veins or something, I don't know. But if ever you need to use that word in English, you can handle it in Spanish too, right? Erection. Erección, right? Now you get to go out there and have fun. You have access to everything that you need, all the essentials, right? Right? We got passion. We got... We got erection. And, and vascularization, right? That's all we need. All right, action, action, tradition, illusion, mission, television, expression, version, comprehension, comprensión, transportación, versión, expresión, televisión, misión, ilusión, tradición, it's the same thing. 16,331 Spanish words. I, I did the math. Actually, I got sneaky, I started counting and then I just went on a, Scrab a Scrabble website, Spanish Scrabble, and then they, they tell you how many words and end with these. So ending with IA, 16,331. Many of them are the same in English, right? Family is? Familia. Familia. History? Storia. Storia. Battery? Bateria. Ceremony? Ceremonia. Urgency. Now the G is like a scratchy H. Urgencia. The U is like an orangutan on the swing. Woo! 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 Urgencia, right? Copy. Copy, like a photocopy. Copia. You see the signs everywhere in the stores. Copias, copias, copias. It's copy, right? So a lot of words right there. 10,689 words end with AR. Hundreds of them are very similar in English. Actually, the same. Similar. Similar. That's why I wrote similar because it was, I guess it was a joke. Similar is similar, right? Regular. Regular. Familiar. Familiar. Perpendicular. Right? Who, lear who learns that in a, in, a, in a basic Spanish class? Right? No, but why not? Every once in a while you need to know that, right? The avenues, right? Or the streets are, are perpendicular, perpendicular to the beach, right? The avenues are paralelos. Right? Parallel. It's important every once in a while. You might use it once a year. But if you have the access to it in your English vocabulary or your French vocabulary, because these, I mean, this works double for French, right? So you have a, a double advantage. By the way, for all the Frenchies, if, uh, si vous avez des questions, ça ferait plaisir de faire une petite parenthèse en français. Je parle très rapidement des fois. 
Don't care. I speak a little fast sometimes. Just let me know. Huh? Omelette du fromage. Dexter. I love it. Right? Rectangular. Rectangular. Lunar. Lunar. Solar. Solar. How do you say sun in Spanish? Sol, right? That's where you get the soul from, from solar eclipse, from solar panel, right? <laughs> Mind blown. Muscular. 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 Excellent. 2,427 Spanish words and with eco. All, many of them are similar in English. Just remember one. Romantic. Romantico. Romantico. Exotic. Exotico. Exotico. Fantastic. Fantastico. Fantastico. Basic. Exactly. Electric. Electrical. Orgasmic. Orgasmic. Who, who made this list? <laughs> and in this order. <laughs> Alcoholic. Alcoholico. <laughs> Medic. Medico. Allergic. Very good. Basic. Basico. Organic. Organico. We're ready to go and have a party and then recover the next day. Perfect. Traffic. Trafico. 2,334 words and with ente, E-N-T-E. -E. All these words, we're also going to learn the entire present tense, the entire uh, future tense and past tense and maybe another past tense uh, w with irregular verbs. So we got 30 minutes to try and stop, stop interrupting everybody, please. <laughs> All right. There's 2,334 words that end with ente, E-N-T-E. -E. Right? Most of them are similar to English. You only have to remember one. You get one and your reticular activating system, your RAS, right, in charge of pattern recognition. If you understand it and you, you can visualize it, you can taste it and you can feel it, right, and you, you, you understand it, your, your RAS will be able to copy paste. I have it all the time. It's so surprising. Still to this day, I'm in a conversation, I'm speaking, I'm flowing. All of a sudden, I'll stop. Wait, wait, wait. I just used the word last sentence. Is, is that a real word? They're like, yeah, I'm like, damn, I didn't know, even know that I knew that word. It, it was just because of, of, of one or two patterns that were applied to it automatically by the RAS, right? So the brain is filled with different, part, different compartments, different areas, and most of the time we don't know how they work, so they work separately. Imagine if you had a big company and the sales and the marketing and, the, and all the different divisions didn't talk to each other ever, right? It would be disaster. Now imagine... And also, if the owner was trying to micromanage every department, it would be a disaster. So once you can program your brain with these tricks, you can actually be on the beach, chilling, enjoying the, the margarita, enjoying the conversation, and the different parts of your brain, they're working for you. Right? That's so much easier than having to do the work yourself. You just ask for the word and your brain just gives it to you. It's freaky. It sounds impossible. But I guarantee you, you can experience it. It's magic and it's fun. So. Evident, evidente, accident, accidente, intelligent, very good, the G is an H, inteligente, very good, persistent, es necesario, es necessary. you need to be persistente, every day, every day, cada día, right, permanent, very good, remember the A is like at the dentist, ah, permane permanente, 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 equivalent, yeah, and the QU is like a K, and the I is an orgasmic dolphin. E, e, e. Right? So, equi becomes equi. Right? Equivalente. Equivalente. Again, you might say to yourself, these are two different words. I don't know equivalente. It's so complicated. It's the same word. It's just add a little bit of like, sexy flair to it. Un poco de sabor, ¿eh? Un poco de tajín. Bam! Uh, I keep scrolling up. Inconvenient. Inconvenient. Yes, it's important to take your time, right? Take a deep breath before you speak. Imagine it in English and literally just say, like, you'd be surprised. People can say inconvenient, inconvenient. Then they try to say it in Spanish. In, 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 and they're adding eight syllables and they're adding things that don't. It's literally the same thing. Inconvenient, inconveniente. Incon like, it's the same. It's, it's so surprising and it's so sad how 95% of people, right, when you're trying to say a word, one of these words in, in Spanish, you're adding six syllables, you're, you're removing syllables that aren't there, you're, you're making it so complicated and you're adding in a Russian accent for some reason. Like, it's just English, 
All right. It's just English, but we're sexier. All right, he's cut off. No mas tequila, no mas tequila. No mas tequila. Right? How do we say, how do we say, urgent? Very good, there we have the U, the swing. Urgente, right? How do we say immunodeficient? Yes, very good. Immunodeficiente, right? We're ready to have everyday regular coffee shop conversations now, right? That, that one will be on the exam. You have to learn that one. Immunodeficiente, right? Just to give, so it gives you an idea how much rich vocabulary, right? You would never use that in a sentence probably, but most of you can understand that it's like something, I have a deficiency of something with the health or I'm not even sure to be honest, but right? Something along those lines. I've got like a, I'm lacking something in my health or in my vitamins or some, something like that, right? If somebody said in a conversation, I'd be like, yeah, I, I can follow. But in Spanish, you could do it too. There is 1,845 Spanish words that end with al. Many of them are the same, right? Animal. 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 Very good. Normal. 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 Tropical. 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 Vital. Vital. Now, they don't like to use teeth, right? Uh, the, the, back 300 years ago, the uh, Spanier, Spanish women had very rotten teeth. Uh, and, and they couldn't pronounce the V's anymore. Uh, also, also the, uh, the fellatios were getting very painful. So the king, the king just banned the letter V altogether. And now the letter V is always going to be a B. So vital is vital, vital, right? Because the, the I is the dolphin. So B, vital, vital, Nas national. Very good. There's no sh sound in the Spanish language. It's not sexy, right? Unless it's like sh, right? But so they hate the sh, so they make it si on. They, ha they, they don't say sh, they say si, right? So national, nacional. Isn't that better, right? Nacional. Ideal. You have to pronounce every single letter, right? So once more. Yes. Ideal. Right? Every single letter has to be pronounced and always in the same way. English is so complicated. Every letter can be pronounced in like eight, ten different ways. Ape, apple, aunt, hall, always. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disaster for a non-native speaker learning to read. It's a disaster. In Spanish, everything is always consistent. There's never any exceptions. So very, very facile. Um, casual. Casual, con conventional. conventional. Yes, remember less teeth. So conven, conventional. Very good. 1,687 words end with mente, right? Possibly becomes. Possibly mente. Yes, possiblemente. So you just add the mente at the end, right? Possibly, possiblemente. Totally. Totalmente. Probably. Probablemente, completely, completamente, directly, excelente, independently, perfect everybody, very good, perfect, perfect, independientemente, excelente, right, finally, finalmente, very good, 1,460 words end with ido, there, many of them are similar, rapid, yeah, and for some reason, all these words, they always like to have the push, the, right, the, the inflection and the beginning. Rapido, rapido, it's got more flair to it, right? That's why the app is called Rappi, because it's rapido. Yeah. All right, timid, timido, shibiritime, right? Any South Park? No? Okay, uh, timido, solid. Solido. Acid. Acid. Acido. Acido. Very good. Avid. Avido. Less teeth, guys. Avido. Avido. Right? Splendid. Splendido. Splendido. Also, they hate starting with S's, right? So they like to add an, an E. That's why Spanish is Espanol, Spain, España. Student, estudiante, stupid, estupido, special, especial, right? Wives or spouses is esposas, 
which also means handcuffs, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> right? So, esplendido. Very good. 1,187 words with oso. Delicious. Delicioso. Curious. Curioso. Precious. Precioso. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabuloso. Fabuloso. Generous. Very good, with an H, right? Generoso. Generoso. Contagious. Contagious. Conta. Contagioso. Contagioso. Mysterious. Mysterioso. Ambitious. Excelente. 986 Spanish words that end with idad. Liberty. Libertad, right? Possibility. Possibility. Possibilidad. Same thing. Community. Comunidad. Activity. Actividad. Reality. Realidad. University. Universidad. Quality. Very good. Uh, the Q U makes a K sound. So. Calidad. Calidad. Curiosity. What killed the cat? Que mató al gato? Curiosidad, excelente. Electricity, which is that velocity. Velocidad. They don't use the word speed. They use velocity. They're very medieval, right? What's your What's your velocity? What's your speed? Velocidad, right? Eight hundred twenty-six words are able, probable, probable, honorable, noble, reasonable, reasonable, adjustable. So the J is like jalapeno, it's also an H, and the U is the U. So aju is ahu. Ahu. Ajustable. Sociable. Sociable. Very good. Memorable. Oh, you guys are so adorable. Adorable. Aww. 785 words are ante, right? They're almost all the same in Spanish and English. Important. Importante, importante, immigrant, very good, brilliant, elegant, lubricant, insignificant, insignificante, it's the same words, very good, excelente. Uh, 677 words with Ibo, attractive, attractivo, exclusive, exclusivo, native. Nativo, active, activo, hyperactive, hyperactivo, very good, imaginative, very good, like an H, imaginativo, consecutive, very good, consecutivo, excelente, hopefully you all test negative, negativo, 595 words with Ario, necessary, you never know teeth, they hate using teeth. But, but what about collectivo? Collectivo. It is collectivo. Okay. So some people, pe some people will say that, they, oh, there's a slight difference between the Spanish V and the Spanish B. You have to really train your ears. It's bullshit. I've asked 100 or 200 natives and like 10, 20% will say that it's different. Like over 80% say it's the same. I see, I hear it the same. I use it the same. So screw it, don't complicate your life. V is a B, period. If anyone has any problem, I can write you a note. V is, v is a B always. V is a B always. Always. The V sounds like a B. So vocabulary is vocabulario, right? Ordinary. Ordinario. Extraordinary. Excelente. Laboratory. Complementary. Is the complementario. 574 words and with ansia and ansia, right? Very easy. Just remember difference. Very good. So we got the difference with the E and we got importance with the A. In English, they're very similar. E N C, right? E N C and A N C. In Spanish, it's ansia and ansia, right? So, so how do you say reference? Yes, referencia. Existence. Existencia. Interference. Interferencia. Patience. Paciencia. Science. 
ci ciencia, right? The I is the e ciencia. Interference. Oh, sorry, we already had that. Now the A ends. Abundance. Yes, but remember the U is the orangutan, so abun. Abundancia. Very good. Ambulance. Ambulancia. Very good. Fragrance. Fragrancia. Very good. Insignificance. Yes. La insignificancia de los problemas, right? De los problemas, right? You say the G here? Like you say the G. Oh, G N. Insigni. It's like ni. It's it. It holds up. It holds up. I'll allow it. Insignificancia. <laughs> 334 words with ible, right? Possible? Possible. Possible. Flexible. Flexible. Irresistible. 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 Excelente. Right? Uh, 137 words. Car. Modify. Modificar. Right? Verify. Verify. Verificar. Classify. Classificar. Very good. Falsify. Falsificar. Falsificar. Excelente. 132 words with ento, moment, momento, momento. momento. cement, cemento. cemento, supplement, cemento, supplement. Document. document, excelente, argument, argument. Argument. department, argument. Excel excelente, argument? Yeah, uh, argument, argument, argumento, yeah, GU is, is always solid as well, yeah, besides that there's no other exceptions, oh, okay. yeah, except for gato, <laughs> right, there's never any exceptions. Right, 127 words with, with kto, correct? Correcto, correcto. contact, contacto, dialect, dialecto, very good. Insect, insecto, very good. 90% of all verbs in Spanish end with AR. And so many of them, hundreds of them are the same in English, just slap on an AR at the end, right? It's insane. To control, controlar, to, to invent, less teeth. Inventar, very good. To transport, transportar. To implement, implementar. Let's get let's get fancy, right? To accept, aceptar. To reserve, reservar. To confirm. Wow, excelente! Round of applause, guys. Woo! Apologies for rushing through it because we had a bit of the all the extra stuff. That's why I'm having it filmed because. The, the issue that I was having with the, the last time I was in the Lechugas was it's always different people coming and going, consistent, inconsistent. So I, I'm wasting a lot of time talking about some things. So now I have it filmed. I'm not going to have to talk about it, waste any time. If anybody, if you have any friends that are coming or the new people, they can just watch the video if they want before to understand what we're, what we're doing here, what's the project, what's the goal, what, how we're going to be moving forward. And we're going to be able to go, I'm going to be able to breathe a lot more in between sentences and we're going to be able to actually have some more practice individually and I'm going to be able to repeat everything in Spanish after con el buen acento para que puedan entender bien todo lo que estoy diciendo but I'll speak a lot more slowly so you can understand right um, all right all right the final hustle final hustle so the entire present tense the entire future tense the entire past tense we got five minutes we ready who's who's timing all right we're going to see it more in depth next week, but I just wanted you to understand how simple it is and get that complicated monkey out of your, off your back, okay? So present, present tense, all we're going to do, take the full verb, okay? Full verb. For I, everybody hold up your telescope, oh. right? What letter do you see? Oh. oh, I spy with my little eye the letter O. Oh. Oh. So, hablar for I speak is hablo. Reservar, reservo. Confirmar, confirmo. Inventar, invento. Right? Easy. I is O because I spy the letter O with my telescope. I is O, O is I. Anybody who's ever done Duolingo? Okay, take the word yo, put it in a ball, throw it the fuck away. You don't ever need yo, tu, nosotros. Yo hablo español. Yo como picante. If you want to sound like a gringo, go ahead. You never need the yo because the o is already expressing the i. It's redundant, right? You don't need it. No es necesario, right? Just quiero, not yo quiero, right? Not yo quiero Taco Bell, right? <laughs> Use that to remember the quiero, but then say, screw you Taco Bell, you learned with Duolingo. <laughs> right? 
Even teachers think that you can't handle this, this crazy transformation of taking two words and making them one. I think you guys can handle it, right? Yes. Yes. So screw the baby steps. Let's speak properly from the beginning, right? Let's not say por favor, let's say porfa, right? Porfa. Speak like a local, porfa. If you're a girl and you want to be cute, you can say porfis. <laughs> and instead of hola, you can say olis. It's, it's really cute. If, if the guys say it, it sounds a little weird, but try it out. It's funny, right? So now go back to the full verb, okay? For he, she, and it, all we're going to do is drop the R. That's it. Take the full verb, drop the R, you have he, she, it. Ablar, abla. Why, how can we remember that there's an A and not an E? Why is not able? Why is abla? Because 90% of our 90% of our AR. And if you can see in your head the AR verb already there, then you take off the R, the A is already there. Inventar, inventa, right? How is she? Como esta? Right? Como esta? How is she? Right? So we drop the R, we have Roberto, Roberta, and the dog. He, she, and it. Question? Screw that! You don't need it. Now, in this case, you sometimes might, bless you, you sometimes might add it for clarification, but not most of the time, it's very, right, it's very simple, right? You, you, you walk up to your friend, he's talking to his girlfriend, she storms off, he says, ¿Qué tiene? Right? You don't need to say what, what's like what Ketiene tiene ella. It's obvious you're talking about her, right? If somebody tells you my, my, my mom's in town, oh como esta? You don't need to say como esta ella, como esta tu mamá. She just told you your mom's in town. Like what are the odds that you're gonna throw a curveball and ask about the dog? Right? It's it's possible, yes, but highly unlikely and not part of normal conversation protocol. Okay? So conversations are two-way streets. It's not you against them, it's you guys working together. So they have to meet you halfway. Right? So if you just say the thing, that they can figure out through the context, con el contexto, right, who you're talking about. So screw everything else, just drop the R, have he, she, it. With comer, to eat, how do you say he eats? Coma. Ah, but comer, come. How do you remember it's an E? It's comer, it's already an E on there, right? So escribir, escribe, right? So we're good, all verbs, boom, okay? For you, why? Because Mo, you're an ass, yeah, <laughs> right? Mo, you're an ass, right? You, my friend, you always have an S. That's why it's como estas, hablas español, right? The S. So, invitar, drop the R, put an S. Invitas. To speak, you speak. Hablas. Comer, you eat. Come. Super simple. Everybody following? Excellent. Again, we're going to go through it again another day, but just basics. Follow, stick with me here, guys. Now, for they, them monkeys over there, right? And y'all, for me, you all are monkeys. Them monkeys are eating all my banana -na 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 -nas, And y'all monkeys are eating all my banana -na 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 -nas. Or you can make some weird association with y'all and, 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 and the letter N. That's on you guys. It's very memorable. <laughs> it's very memorable. <laughs> Right? So they and N, y'all is N. So, uh, right? Como estas for they is como están. You don't have to say how are they, your parents, right? If my parents are in town, como están, right? Uh, hablar, hablan, comer, comen. Excelente, very good. Now, everybody go like this. Wherever you are, wherever you are, you drop the R. And you make the most out of weed time. <laughs> because the rolling stone gathers no moss. moss. Very good. So wherever we are, we drop the R, make the most. So comer, drop the R, bring the most. Comemos. Comemos. Very good. Hablar, drop the R, put in the... Hablamos. There, we got the whole present tense. That... That literally gives you 99% of all conjugations of the Spanish language, 90% of which are AR verbs. So if you just learn hablar, hablo, hablar, hablo, habla, hablas, hablan, hablamos, you, you can copy paste and you have 99% of 90%. Not bad, right? Not bad. Not bad at all. Excelente. Now the beauty about this is I want you guys to get a tattoo Right, on your hand, the S, the N, and the most, because those three 
endings, you can copy paste in the future, the past, subjunctivitis, the conditional, across the board, every verb tense. Whatever you have one, you add an S, you have you, you add the N, you have they, y'all, add the most, you have, it's so stupid, it's so simple, right? Let's do the conditional tense. Anytime you would use the word would, it's the conditional tense. When you're in the woods, you're in the woods. And when you're in the woods, you're in the, 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 the river, the ria. Let's make it even simpler because we don't have time for the story, right? <laughs> Imagine this really weird looking taco stand in the middle of nowhere in a dark alley and the food's been out there all day long and say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. And your friend says, yeah, I would eat it. And then he, he, he would eat it. And then what did he get? Diarrhea. diarrhea. I wouldn't eat that because you get diarrhea. I would eat it, but I got diarrhea. Would rhea. Would diarrhea, would rhea. Ablar, slap on some diarrhea. Ablaria. Inventar, I would invent. Inventaria, right? Reserve, I would reserve. Reservaria, right? Now, what do we add to the ria to make you would? S. Hablarias, comerias. What do we add for they and y'all? N. Comerian, hablarian. Easy. What do we add for we? Mos, riamos, hablariamos, comeríamos. So whenever you're thinking of would, don't think of what is this conditional tense. Nobody fucking knows what it is in your own language. So don't even try to worry about grammar, right? Think of diarrhea, right? So we, want, we don't want grammar, we don't want rules, we don't want to think. Every time you stop to think, what, what tense am I using? What rule is it? You've just hurled yourself into your prefrontal cortex, the monkey brain, his, his, his playground. You've pulled yourself out of flow. Now you're stressing, now you're worried, now you're trying and putting effort. You don't want any of this, right? So triggers give you easy, quick things. Would give you diarrhea. Ria, very good. Now, for the future tense, again, we're gonna do the, the proper story next time because we're gonna. What we, is a, a ria, a ria? So if you don't say, I would eat, but I'm full. Okay. So you say, eh, hey, come ria, pero. I would speak, but I'm shy. Right. Hablaria, what's me gusta mean? I like. I like. I would like. Me gustaría. Yes, eso. <laughs> right? So me gusta, I like, I would like, me gustaría. How much nicer is that than una cerveza? <laughs> right? <laughs> me gustaría una cerveza, porfis? <laughs> right? So much, right? If you ask una cerveza, you get the warmest beer that they have. If you say, me gustaría una cerveza, porfis, you get the coldest beer and a local discount. <laughs> right? And maybe a phone number. <laughs> right? So, very, very nice. Me gusta, me gustaría. And if you remember me gustaría, you could also forget about diarrhea because you already have the ria. Right? Copy paste, baby. Copy paste. Okay? Now, again, we're going to skip the whole story for the, for the future, but future is I'm going. Right? So, imagine you're Pinocchio and, and you made a wish, right? You, you, made a, you made a deal with the devil and you're like, Geppetto comes in and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to get in so much trouble. And Geppetto, my boy, my boy, how are you doing today? He said, Ma Geppetto, I made, a, I made a deal with the devil. I have a bad news and a good news for you. And he said, oh, tell me, my boy, what is wrong? And he said, well, the good news is I'm finally going to be a... Huh? A oh boy, I'm finally going to be a real boy. I learned a long time ago that if I teach you something, you're probably going to forget it. If I traumatize you, you have to pay a professional to get it out. That's why when Brennan said he still has me in his head, it, was, it wasn't, it, it was a warning. It wasn't a, it wasn't a compliment. He's like, that, damn you, Phil. Right? I'm going to be a boy. I'm going to be a boy. Right? <laughs> Mo, how do you say like that or that way? Uh, I see. I see. I see. With the orgasmic dolphin, right? Do you like it that way? <laughs> Spank me on my ass. I see. I see. All right. So, Geppetto, Geppetto, I'm going to be a real boy. I'm boy. Boys, I'm going. The laundry guy's there. The the wrap is there. Cook. The food is ready. You say boy, boy, boy. I'm going, boy. But what is the bad news, my boy? Well. I, you have, I had to give him a something in a return and you're going to be a sheep. And Geppetto turns into a sheep on all four hooves, get all fuzzy and woolly. He says, Geppetto, Pinocchio, you're such a bad boy. Bad boy, bad boy. 
Ba, ba, ba. So I'm going to be a boy and he's going to be a bad sheep. Ba. So I'm going to eat his boy a comer. I'm going to speak boy a hablar. Right? He is going to eat ba a comer. Right? We don't even need the L. Just ba a comer. Ba a comer. Right? Ba a hablar. Ba a ba a ba a. What do we add to ba for you? S. So it becomes bas a for they y'all are going pan a very good and we're going to the beach vamos a la playa all right that's not the real future tense but the future tense is incredibly simple but what's simpler and easier than simple avoidance avoid all the problems avoid all the things that you can right i i am the laziest person you ever meet i will always find a, a shortcut and a way to avoid all the problems okay so use boya ba a basa bana bamosa but you don't have to remember them all you only need to remember the boy and the ba because you've already invested the time to remember and get the tattoo for the s the n and the most it's the same one Right? I, I went through years and years of exams in French school, right? failing most of them, not realizing that it's the same freaking endings in French as well. You just have to memorize a couple and that's it. But they make you memorize like hundreds of pages and p pass exams and feel like an idiot for years and years. Right? I could speak near perfect French. My, I went to French school all my life, but my English is better than my French. I could use all the verbs tenses, but when it's on paper and it's like, all right, Give me the, the, the more than perfect on the I form. I don't fucking know. It's, not, it's, it's useless information. How do you use it? That's what you need. Now, how do we use the past tense? Let's first learn how to avoid it, right? Who's ever taken a spa day, right? Or a rest day, or a, or a, a beer day, a football day, a chill day, a relaxed day, right? Whenever we have time, let's take a something day, right? Now, let's all travel back in time and let's take a Cabo day. Right? I'm going to call a cab and this giant magical cab will take us into the past, into Cabo St. Lucas and we're going to take a, a, a Cabo day and in our Cabo day we can relive all of your favorite days of your life. So we're going to take, we're going to call a cab and take a Cabo day. A Cabo day means I just, right? Have you, are you hungry? Do you want to eat? A Cabo de comer, I just ate, right? Hey, uh, have you seen this person? A cabo de berlo, a cabo de bear. Have you seen the movie Terminator? A cabo de berlo, 20 years ago, was great. I just saw it, right? So that one has a bit of limitations to it, but I, whenever I have Spanish teachers, by the way, if anybody knows any Spanish, Spanish teachers that want to come to my uh, actual courses for free uh, so they can learn these tricks, they're very, very welcome. And they always laugh their asses off when I get to the boy yeah, and the cabo day. It's like, you sneaky son of a bitch. It would happen often when I'm in a conversation and I'm using a cabo de boya, cabo de boya, and at one point I'll say something like I just saw it 20 years ago. They're like, do you even know the past tenses? And I'm like, nope. Do you know the future tense? No, not yet. I don't need it right yet. For now, it's enough, right? So, a cabo de for he, she, it. Give me a wild guess. A caba de, right? The O becomes an A because 90% of verbs are A. A caba de for you just. A cabas day, they just, a caban day, and we just, a cabamos day. So we just learned the entire present tense, the entire conditional tense, the wood tense, the whole future tense, the whole past tense, four verb tenses in like what, five minutes, six minutes? Round of applause, guys. <laughs> excelente, excelente. Yeah. A caba. A caba day means she just. She, he just, he just, it just. Okay. So like if somebody asks like, hey, have, have, have you seen my sister? Oh, a cabo de berla, I just saw her, right? Ha, have you seen, the, the, have you, have you, are you hungry? He said, no, a cabo de comer, okay. right? Is, the, is your dog hungry? A cabo de comer, okay. right? So you just use the cabo de and you're good. So round of applause for being here. <laughs> it's not, like you said, it's simple, but it's not always going to be easy, right? You're going to have to wrestle with your subconscious brain, with the monkey brain. You're going to want to not show up. You're going to want to skip a day, skip two days. Next thing you know, five months go by and you're like, what the hell happened to my Spanish, right? We need to stay consistent. We need to support each other and, and help each other stay motivated, stay focused. And so we can all grow and succeed and move forward together. So thank you for being here.
Muchas gracias. So my commitment to you is every every Thursday I will I will be here to give these classes. We're going to try add as much value and go through all the hacks. We're also going to go through uh, troubleshooting. So if anybody has any struggles, problems, issues, complications, right? We'll have some periods, some question open open floor where we're going to simplify them and and find ways uh, on the fly.